اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سیدنا وحبیبنا وطبیب نفوسنا وشفیع ذنوبنا ابی القاسم محمد اللہم صل على محمد و آل محمد کما صلیت على ابراہیم و آل ابراہیم و بارک على محمد و آل محمد کما بارکت على ابراہیم و آل ابراہیم انکا حمید مجید ریسپیکٹڈ برادرز و سیسٹرز السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Welcome to our program today where inshallah we are going to discuss about the personality, one of the greatest personality amongst the Ahlul Bayt alayhim wa salam. Today's program we are going to discuss about the life of Imam Ali ibn al-Hussein al-Sajjad Zainul Abideen alayhi salam. And inshallah we want to look at this program about not only his life, because we are celebrating his wilada, we want to know much about his uh, life when he was young, his titles, his contribution towards Islam, his life before Karbala, his life after Karbala, what other people have said, what kind of lessons we are going to learn from his life. And with me today, alhamdulillah, we have our beloved Sheikh, Sheikh al Mubarak. Sheikh Mirza Abbas, most welcome, Sheikhna. Thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Ayyub. Uh, lovely to be with you again. Alhamdulillah. On this special occasion. Alhamdulillah. Lovely to be with our viewers. Alhamdulillah. And to once again discuss with you uh, the life of great personality and to learn from you, inshallah. Yeah, Thank you very much, Sheikh. Most welcome. Thank you. Maybe the first point which we need to discuss about is Imam Ali ibn al Hussein. Of course, he is known as Ali, son of Imam Hussein. Yes. So if we want to look at his uh, father and mother, uh, what can we see there with the life of uh, this great personality of Imam Sajjad yeah. uh, The First of all, the name itself, mm. Ali, you know, uh, tells us something as, uh, you know, we read that uh, Imam Hussain salam, la named all his children Ali and Fatima. MashaAllah. You know, so, you know, Imam Zainul Abideen is named as Ali. Mm. You know, is, is one of the Ali so of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, uh, which is uh, Ali Awsat, they say. Mm. You know, he was mm. the middle. There's Ali Akbar and Ali Asghar and yeah. all of these sort of uh, things that we tend to find. Um, so that's uh, in regards to Imam Sajjad salam, with the name as Ali. Yeah. yeah. Uh, th this point is very important because uh, uh, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa has said clearly that one of the rights of a child is for you as parents to give beautiful names to them. Yes. And yes. of course no one will go wrong if he chooses Muhammad or Ali. Yes. And. Of so one thing which you can see with Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he named his children as Ali, Ali, Ali. Yes. Now, how do we differentiate uh, who's, who's, who is who among the Ali? Then you have Ali al-Akbar, Ali al-Awsat, Ali al-Asghar. So al-Akbar, Ali al-Akbar, the, the elder Ali, the middle Ali al-Awsat, and the younger Ali, the Asghar. So it seems that uh, with Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam, they are teaching us that you can name your children after the same name, but of course with uh, something to add on to differentiate between one and another. Mm -hmm. And I remember they were Fatima, Fatima al-Kubra, Fatima al-Sughra, uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah. But when we look at the titles of Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, we come to know that Imam had many titles. And uh, from these titles, we learn about many things which are connected with our own lives. One of the titles which is very fa famous is a sajjad. Sajjad is suira mubalagha, if we can call it in Arabic. Mm -hmm. Superlative yes. of showing that the person who does sujood again and again and again. 
And I think we need to elaborate more on other titles as well. Isn't yes, it, Chef? Yes, definitely, yes. And the other title which is related to the, you know, uh, the, uh, Hazrat Sajjad, you mm. know, Sajjad itself, is Zainul Abideen, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and as a matter of fact, if we just reflect a bit upon Sajjad itself, it Sajda is the highest point of proximity Indeed. of an Abd to the Mawla. There isn't any other highest point than the Sajda itself. Mm. You know, in Sajda, he is the closest to God. Allah. That's why, you know, now the month of Ramadan is coming up, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, take us all in this month, inshallah, with health, Ilahi with tawfiqat, and our mu'minin and mu'minat who are watching us, and all mu'minin and mu'minat as well. That's why the Prophet says, do long sajdas, because your back have been loaded with sins. Mm -hmm. And with this prolonged sajdas, your back will, you know, will become light. Mm. So sajda is one of the point where insan comes closer to God. Mm. You know, in a way that even he would, uh, in Irfani sort of uh, terminology, become fana, mm -hmm. with an highlight. Um, I was reading this book, uh, Adab salat of Imam Khomeini, mm. alayhi, in which he is explaining the sir, the secret of sajda. First sajda we go subhana rabbi al ala wa bihamdi mm. and then we get up what do we say we say astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu and then we go sajda again then second sajda we say subhana rabbi al ala wa bihamdi so the first sajda with the sir and all that with the ruku and qiyam that he has discussed already on the basis of riwayat and ayat uh, the first sajda we are saying you are the ala then we get up, they say, I remember saying Subhana Rabbi al ala mm -hmm. Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa Atubali. Then I go in Sajda again, Allah. which is Fana, mm. which is completely and not Sajda. even, yeah. So Sajda is that point where insan can come closest to God. Mm -hmm. Now, the title of Imam is Imam Sajjad. Allah. Allah. He is the Imam. You know, in terms of the sujood, Subhanallah. no doubt, you know, all of the imams had these qualities. Yeah. In some imams, it, stand, it stood out more in accordance to the capacity and time and space that they were living in. If Imam Radha was born at Imam Hussein time, he would have done exactly the same thing which Imam Hussein have done. Indeed, indeed. You know. And uh, mashallah, very well said that Imam Sajjad, uh, had this title Sajjad because of Kathra to Sujood. I remember the hadith from Imam Jafar al Sadiq, alayhi salam, the sixth Imam, where he said that my grandfather, Imam Sajjad, was known as Sajjad because, oh, the hadith either from Imam Jafar al Sadiq or Imam Muhammad al Bakir, alayhi salam. He said, My grandfather, he was known as Sajjad because he used to do a lot of Sajda. Whenever, now he expanded the, 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 the explanation, he says, whenever my father finished salah, he would do sujood, shukran lillah. Whenever my father would, for example, uh, receive good news, he would do sajda. Whenever my, father, my grandfather would bring reconciliation between two people, he would go for sujood. Whenever my father would remember any ni'mah blessing he would do sujood and that's why he was known as sa sajjad and he was known as the athafanat the one who had the marks of sujood on his forehead and he used to trim this every year at least once or twice so you can see the amount of sujood and sometimes we miss just to say shukran lillah to thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why I think Sajjad has known as Sajjad. Zainul Abidin. Yes. There is an uh, event that took place uh, that once he was praying. And in this sort of uh, ibadat, as he was filled in ibadat, the uh, house gets burnt uh, in one report. But he still continued praying. Masha Allah. 
Uh, in another report is the report of a snake that came in and uh, you know uh, and even this did not scared him it, he continued worshiping it could be all different events happening at different times by which eventually he is given that title after all of these imtihanat in another event is the report of a his one of his child falling down into the well but still imam continued you know for example you know and uh, the halat the state when that hour of prayer would come you know he would look towards the heaven and his face color will change subhanallah pain. subhanallah you know he will start realizing that hour is coming where one have to meet his lord allah he would be praying if the Abba would fell from his shoulder, he will not really pick it up because Allah he is Allah like, Allah. you know, praying in front of the master. Right? So all of these events kind of points out to eventually that title came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is Zainul Abideen. Mm. He is the Zina. He is the ornament. Mm -hmm. He is the beauty Masha. of all of those who are the worshippers of Allah subhanahu all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All our worshippers are, but you know, it's like, for example, you have this, you know, God says, وَزَيَّنَ sama mm. mm. God have beautified the heaven with the stars. Mm. You know, it's like beautification. Mm -hmm. You know, it's beautiful, but with these stars, it is most beautiful. Mm. You know, like for example, Zainab, Hazrat Zainab, salamu alayha, one of, you know, she is that beautiful ornament of the Father. Mm. You know, makes that, so all this sort of, uh, culmination of of art <laughs> of marifa of sort of you know everything comes into that little you know masterpiece <laughs> that you know the artists want to present you know that becomes that beauty subhanallah you know subhanallah. you know that's why when you read this poetry uh, or in persian you know about the mole you know the labe aidus giraftar shudam like for example <laughs> imam mentions that you know i am you know i am in sort of a chain or in prison by the mole which is on top of your lips allahu akbar so this this that's the beauty spot that's called that beauty spot so the whole beauty is summoned in that that becomes beautiful mm -hmm. so the whole beauty summoned in one thing becomes beautiful. So you have Imam Sajjad, who is Zainul Abideen. Mm -hmm. All the beauty of all of the Ubbad, all of the worshippers is reflected in Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. Alayhi salam, mashallah. Yeah. Indeed, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam was Sajjad and he was Zainul Abideen. Yes. And, and uh, <clears throat> from Imam Sajjad to our social life, sometimes we see people, when they do ibadah, he or she, he will become Abid, she will become Abida, we will become Ibad, and O Abideen. So if at the time of Imam Sajjad, if there were many Abideen, people who used to worship Allah properly, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam would be Zain, mm. Zain of all the Abideen. And uh, the lesson we are learning is that sometimes some people, unfortunately with the world which we are living in, when someone who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly, properly, sometimes we tend to see that these people are disconnected with the real situation, that they are surrounded by normal people. So in, in, instead of them becoming zainu of their time in terms of ibadah, because of their behaviors, people tend not to like them. Why? They make like uh, ibadah is only for them. Mm. But with Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, not the cases which you have mentioned there, his uh, family members would look at him when he prays. His abaya comes off and Imam, he is in his salah. He doesn't pay attention to the abaya. They would come and cover him. Look at the way these days, especially people who wear, for example, this is just example, tie. Or we wear dash dasha and the button, for example, opens. Sometimes when we are in salah, you can see that some of us will take time to adjust the tie and uh, 
the buttons until you forget that you are in salah. Yes. Imam Zainul Abidin is telling us that no, 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 no. Remember that this, this now is you are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So your attention should be 100% fully towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he was performing wudu, as you have mentioned, his color would change. He would be seeing that he's shaken. And the people would ask him, why do we see you in this condition? He would say that, don't you know that I'm going to meet with my beloved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the lesson we are learning here is from people, especially those who say, why can't I focus in my salah? Mm. I don't have focus in my salah. Sure, yes. The lessons we are telling them from the life of Imam yes. Sajjad alayhi salam that your concentration, tadabbur in your salah doesn't begin when you say Allahu Akbar. Your tadabbur should begin when you do wudu. Yes. Indeed. Why? Because Imam Sajjad is, is showing us Zainul Abidin, when you perform wudu, this is the time you need to remember this wudu you are going to do salah with. So pay attention now, you are going to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why he require he 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 is is truly sajjad as well as Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Indeed. Yes, it's very unfortunate, very briefly, because we have to take lessons and you know, discuss the practical aspect of our prayers, you know, from the Imams, how they were. Uh, we also see the aspect of how, while praying, the Imam have focused towards, you know, you know, even in Ruku, they have given mm. in charity, Indeed. like Amirul Mumin, like the grandfather Salam. of Imam. So, I mean, you know, so it's the point is that point of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, focus on God, mm. on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pure, sincere focus on Allah. Mm, mm, mm. But we are so much involved with our clothes, maybe with our time, the show is about to finish. I don't know the score was about 3 nil or 2 nil. Mm, mm. You know, the half time is about to be over. Yeah. You know, the football is going on. I don't want to leave. Our mind is everywhere. Mm. You know, what are, what type of follower are we yeah. of Imam Sajjad? Yeah, Ahsan, you're right. You know, we claim ourselves as mm. a lover. You know, I'm including myself here. Mm -hmm. We don't have time after prayer to do tasbih of Fatima, salamu Yeah. To go in sajda and speak to God. Mm. We just pray quickly and, you know, finish. Indeed. As if it was like a big burden on us, that it was wajib and we... <coughs> Yeah, Finish that. unfortunately, unfortunately, <coughs> we need to learn lessons from the life of uh, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam and uh, especially when we talk about hub that we love Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, we honor him and one thing we see, mashallah, with all Muslims, regardless of their madhab school of thought, when it comes to Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, they honor him. Why? Not only that he is the son of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, but the way he presented himself in front of people, each and every one honored him because of his level of uh, understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when we look at the life of uh, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, we see him with his father, Imam Hussein, until he participates in the battle of uh, Karbala on the day of Ashura. He was there as a young man. And according to history, he was married at that time. And even he had a child, the fifth Imam, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir alayhi salam, who was uh, maybe three or four years of age at that time. And now we see the life of Imam Sajjad alayhi salam with, with his father until Karbala. And then we see another life of Imam Sajjad after Karbala. Yeah. So... Maybe there are a few lessons we need, we need to learn from the life of Imam Sajjad before and after Karbala, and then we will look at uh, other aspects of his life. So when we look at the life of Imam Sajjad alayhi salam before Karbala, we don't see much of the narrations. We don't see much of uh, whatever he says. We understand why, because the father was there. But uh, what can we say about Imam Sajjad during that particular period? Right. Uh, obviously, you know, his presence 
uh, during the uh, during the time where, for example, Imam Hassan al Mushtawa alayhi salam, mm. uh, you know, the household of Ahlul Bayt, Bani Hashim, you know, were, were, were unique in terms of their balagat, in terms of their. Now, this is clearly reflected in the duas, mm. you know, that balagat, you know, say that he eventually, when will point out to his contribution, uh, it's all started way before, Indeed. obviously. Because at the time of Karbala, they say that he was about 24 years old, mm. you know, mm. 24, 25, that age that they give him. So the life is before Karbala, you know, yeah. which is 24 in the service of Imam Hassan alayhi salam as the Imam and then Imam Hussein alayhi salam. As also, you know, the influence or I would say not the influence, but rather I would say that his combination with his pure you know, uh, pure lady, mm. uh, Hazrat Shaharbanu, yeah. who was the mother mm. of Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. This also points out to that unique aspect of Imam Sajjad, where he is culminating, you know, the Salman al-Farsi, mm, mm, you know, mm, mm. minna ahli bayt, yeah. you know, that sort of Persian kind of blood with the Arab mm. kind of, you know, blood as well here. So this also makes Imam Sajjad as a very unique young lad. Thank you very much for raising this point. Uh, I think I, I need to mention this, that uh, recently we, we, we have heard from some people who when they want to try to poke holes uh, within the life of uh, oh, a, a, a kida of uh, followers of Ahlul Bayt salam, they would say that, you know why the Shias uh, love, for example, Iranians is because of this particular point you have mentioned, because the mother of Imam Sajjad comes from Persia. So, followers of Ahlul Bayt, their wala, their connection is with Persia, and and to me this is a very weak kind of uh, point to be raised. But we need to talk about it. Why people miss to see? that the Imma of Ahlul Bayt salam, all of them are from Quraysh. Why when we mention about the mother of Imam Sajjad alayhi salam that she was from Persia, then the issue of Arabs, Persians comes in here. Why do they say that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa said clearly in the hadith in Sahih Muslim for example and other books clearly Al Khulafa umin Baadi Ifna Ashara wa Kulluhum min Quraysh. Khulafa, for us, a Imma, are 12. And all of them are from Quraysh. Why then people have this kind of sensitivity when you mention, for example, the mother of Imam Sajjad is from Persia? They will bring a lot of issues. It's like now we are bringing Arabs versus Pharisee here. And uh, Alhamdulillah, you and me, we are not. We are not either Arabs or we are not either Persian, but we honor Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. Definitely. Now, definitely. any point there? Yes, uh, exactly. I mean, the point is the point of, you know, uh, inna akramakum illallah atqaq. Inna akramakum illallah atqaqum indeed. And as they cannot find any, uh, you know, reason, valid reasons mm. to really bring down the, you know, reality, the authenticity, uh, you know, the argument of, uh, of Tashayyo, mm. you know, they look for these sort of, you know, weak uh, reasons to, uh, to, to really criticize or to raise issues or questions or doubts. And particularly, I think the time that we are living in, you know, there's a heavy influence, politically speaking, uh, from, uh, you know, from the uh, Persian community uh, uh, with regards to the Tashayyo. Mm. You know, anywhere that they will see, for example, a Shia practicing, they would say that, oh, he's Majusi, so to speak, mm. or he's Iranian. Mm -hmm. You know, wherever anything, you know, happens, they say, oh, this has to do with something to do with Iran. Sure. You know, what's happening in Bahrain? Oh, this is Iranian. What's happening in, I don't know, uh, you know, uh, in India or Pakistan or somewhere, oh, it's something to do with. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not the case. Indeed. You know, because of the political uh, air at present, uh, as well, you know, kind of facilitate uh, them to really uh, use this argument. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for mentioning that. And so, we conclude that our Imma alayhi salam, 
from Imam Ali alayhi salam to Imam Al Mahdi Ajal Allahu Farajahu Sharif. All these are Imma are Quraysh. Yes. So yes. there's no idea of them being non Arabs and so on and so forth. But the point to say that Imam, his mother, was from Persia, maybe this may be taken from the view that Imam Hussein alayhi salam was not a racist. Yes. And our, our, our Imma alayhi no. salam, they did, did not practice that. Not at all. Not mm. at all. And, and in the future, as you look at it, uh, you know, uh, many of the Imams. Uh, you know, mothers were from, you know, from uh, African countries, yeah, which kind of affected their genealogy, mm. right? And this has nothing to do with, with, uh, with them not being Quraysh, yeah. or, for example, they being some sort of, how shall I say, being influenced, mm. you know, mm. because mm. Imams, they, don't, they are not influenced by anything. Indeed, indeed. You know, yeah. And maybe it added a value in, in terms of uh, skin color they had, and people would look at them, that these are normal human beings, they could interact with them easily. Yes. Of course, in terms of spiritual level, they were in a highest level no one could reach because sure, sure. they are Imma alayhi sure. salam. I mean, this really answers that, uh, that uh, you know, th that answer to the modern issues that we have of, of racism, mm. skin color, race issues, like for example, you'd find in many people, you know, they are very proud of their race, whether mm. that be Europeans, for yeah. example, Hitler, so on and so forth, that is. Yeah. or the Arabs, for example, right? They would disregard, you know, non-Arabs, some Arabs, sure. you know, like that. So imams, right from the very beginning, answered this practically, mm, that mm -hmm. there's no such thing as so color, there's no such thing as a race. Indeed. Even marrying, you know, the, you know, most of the mothers were 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 jaria, were you know, were slave women. Mm, ex slave Right. Said, ex, yeah. yeah, they were all. Ex, they bought the slaves and they got married to them. Mm, mm, where mm. slaves were considered as a lower indeed. You know, you know, class indeed. of citizens you know of that sort of uh, you know nation or empire or whatever indeed. but they acted the opposite way subhanallah and this add a big value to the mother of ahlul bayt alayhi salam why because when we we follow the aimma alayhi salam from ahlul bayt these are mutahharun yes. they are purified they don't have any na'ra jahiliya or ta'assub or racism or whatever they think about taqwa the way you have said and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam he said he, he has said clearly in the hadith idha atakum man tardawna khuluqahu wa dinahu fazawwijuh if someone comes to you uh, for marriage and uh, you are happy with his akhlaq you are happy with his faith morality and faith morality and and uh, he's a good natured person fazawwijuh he didn't say only Quraysh, only Arabs, only so and so on and so forth. And the, the, the way we see the life now is changing. And Aima alayhi salam, they noticed this that time. And that's why Imam Hussein alayhi salam married this lady Shahrabanu. And Imam Sajjad alayhi salam was born. Yes. Now, when we look at the life of Imam Hussein alayhi, uh, Imam Sajjad Ali ibn Hussein Zainul Abidin alayhi salam, especially uh, at the time when now the political situation changed. Uh, Bani Umayyah came to power, and uh, we know that they were against Bani Hashim, especially children of Ali bin Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salam, Ali, from, from the time of Imam Ali until Karbala happened, it was because of that. So Imam Sajjad, alayhi salam, participated in the Battle of Karbala. His father, Imam Hussein, took him with him, and when he was there on the day of Ashura, when we look at the history of the martyrs, Shuhada of Karbala, he wasn't there because he was saved. He wasn't killed on the day of Ashura. And actually, people wanted to kill him. He was saved. There are lessons we are learning from this. Yes. Because all men almost were finished. Yes, definitely. Except Imam Sajjad, yes. alayhi salam. Yes. Uh, the period of his illness uh, on the day of Ashura uh, is, uh, is uh, authenticated, is recorded. Mm. And that was for a limited period of time that he is saved in a divine fashion for the Imama to continue uh, for those hours. There are reports prior to this period where, because they had stopped water on the 7th, mm. And they say that Imam, he went with Abu al-Fazl Abbas uh, 
uh, in order to fetch water and he fought mm. I mean he was a strong personality okay. uh, but uh, uh, one thing that He's been known for as a bimar, as they say in Farsi and Urdu, you know, a bimar e Karbala, you know, the mm -hmm. one who was a ill in Marib Karbala, Karbala, Marib Karbala, even Karbala in Arabic. In Arab Arab yeah. So he became very famous because of that, mm. but which points out to that maybe he was weak or something like that. No, he was a strong man, you know, and he had participated in many ghazwa. you know, mm. many sort of, uh, you know, little battles, skirmishes, skirmishes yes. Yeah. And, and that particular hour, that day, uh, he fell enormously ill uh, in a state of you know, unconsciousness even. When the last time when Imam Hussein comes and wakes him up and he was shocked to see the father mm. in, dressed in the armor. And he said, what's going on? You know, where is my uncle? Where is my brother? So where is my, you know, you know your, your companion? So on and so forth. Imam Hussain basically stopped him and he says, Oh Sajjad, know that in the Qiyam, there are only two men, either you and me. Allah. All are gone. Allah. Right? Then he really wanted to fight, but he couldn't get up. He was so weak. And, you know, Hazrat, he, 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 Imam Hussain asked Hazrat Zainab to, you know, take care of him. Mm -hmm. And she did. You know, she was the protector of Wilayat in Imam Hazrat Zainab. Mm -hmm. Just like how mother, Fatima al Zahra, Salamu alayha was indeed, right? So yes, so that period he was ill and obviously after that, you know, there's a period where he was continuously under persecution, mm. you know, being chained, being Allah. taken from Karbala to Kufa, Kufa to Sham, uh, you know, he lived a very, uh, you know, uh, in a very, how shall I say, under a lot of pain. Mm. You know. And indeed, and, and this, this is the point when we normally talk about the life of Imam Sajjad alayhi salam and we read the history of him, salamullahi alayhi, we see a lot of pain from Karbala where he saw his father being martyred and uh, of course 17 of his family members who were martyred and then from there as you said clearly chained and paraded in the streets of Kufa and then taken on the horses or the backs of the camel in a harsh journey towards Sham. And then of course there in Sham also in the Jami al-Umawi in this masjid or in the palace also of Bani Umayya Yazid, the way he treated the heads, include especially the head of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, then Imam Sajjad is taking care of the cap captives of Karbala, the ladies. And then when Imam comes to Karbala to visit the graves of his father and his brothers and his uncle. And then of course from there back to Medina, this left a big impact in the life of Imam yes. Sajjad. Yes. I mean it was really Imam Sajjad's personality, mm. his strength and courage that allowed him to face Mm. all of these atrocities and carry out that message and protect that message and mm. hand over to the generations to come uh, that it remains today you sure. know uh, after the return of them to Medina as they were pockets of revolutions and Qiyam and rebels and you know uh, still there were people uh, involved in their worldly uh, vain, uh, you know, uh, charms of life. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a narration that comes. He says that among the whole, you know, Islamic ummah, there could be, you know, twelve or thirteen. Mm. You know, I don't remember the exact hadith. Yeah. But for sure, not more than fifteen. I know that mm. they are considered to be true followers of Ahlul Bayt, like a Shia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So imagine that period Subhanallah. where there were only so much left, you know, you know, fing a handful. Yeah. Right. And uh, but he managed to really deliver his mm. methodology yeah. of buying slaves, freeing them in the month of Ramadan, mm. training them, teaching them, making them one of the great awliyas of their time. Mashallah. You know, because they say that in Africa. Uh, there was no, there was a drought. Mm -hmm. 
and they did dua, everything, but no rain. Mm -hmm. Finally, they said, they said that there is a very pious person, let's bring him. So he comes, he was invited you know, to do the dua, he raised his hand, and as soon as he finished, rain started to come. They asked him, who are you, where were you, and what dua you did? Then he said, you know, I was one of the slaves of Imam Sajjad, Allah. where Imam Sajjad trained him. Mm. He became a full-fledged scholar. Transformed their yes. life completely. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and this is the point when you look at uh, Muslims from other schools of thought. They would mention, for example, people who have uh, the uh, test of tasawwuf. Mm -hmm. For example, they would mention Malik bin Dinar, that he was a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people miss to know that he was a follower of Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. From the school of Ahlul Bayt, people would mention the names of Abu Hamza al thumali Yes. And of course the dua of Abu Hamza al-Thumali. But one point which I want us to discuss here is about, before going to other points, the point of uh, him being known that uh, a day when he was performing his tawaf, because of uh, the nur and ma'rif of Allah which was with him, people saw something which nobody could, could maybe few people would understand why. I remember a line which says, قلوب العارفين لها عيون ترى من لا يراه الناظرون سؤال واضح قلوب العارفين the yes. hearts of the urafa yes. those people who know Allah properly لها عيون the hearts have eyes these hearts see which other people who have eyes cannot be cannot be able to see so now Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, since we are, we are talking about his wilada, it's a good to mention this point. He comes to do his tawaf. Tawaf, you go around Al-Kaaba, yeah. where many people were there at that time. Yeah. It was difficult, commotion, traffic of people, difficult to go around easily. Imam Sajjad comes, wants to do his tawaf, and everyone is going aside to allow him to go around Al-Kaaba. Then, of course, Farazdak was there, and uh, Abdul Malik bin Marwan was there. And uh, all of a sudden he says, man hadha, who is this? Like in a way of bringing him down. Farazdak wouldn't stop, and he started praising Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Imam, uh, Imam, Imam, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam yes. Hassan. Yes. What can we say about this? This, yes. this magnificent scene where people around Al-Kaaba, everyone is busy, wants to touch Al-Kaaba. Even the Khalifa is there. Yeah. Even and, Marwan, and, who and, have with his all entourage and mm, he wants to move and mm, his people, you know, his Ab soldiers might be trying yeah, to move Abdul people. Malik, but Abdul Malik wouldn't you know, be able yeah, to just, uh, yeah. just go easily there. Yeah. 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 So, so you, can, you, can say, you can say and see that clearly people would honor the one who is Zainul Abidin. Yes. Because they were ibad doing their ibadah, but then Farazdak would come and say, You said man hadha? Mm -hmm. I will tell you man hadha. Yes. Hadha alladhi ta'arifu al-bathaa'u wa ta'atahu. Wa al-baytu ya'arifuhu wa al-hillu wa al-haramu. This is the one whose footsteps, the haram of Mecca and Medina would know him. Not only that, wa al-baytu ya'arifuhu. The bayt of Allah al-Kaaba knows who yes. is this one? Yes, him. yes. Wal baytu ya'rifuhu wal hillu wal haramu hadha ibn khayr ibadillah kullihimu. This is the son of the righteous servants of Allah, all of them. Bi jaddihi, anbiya'ullahi qad khutimu. Him, it is from his grandfather, the messengership came to an end. Hadha ibn Fatima. Allahu Akbar. If you don't know him, let me Allah tell you. Akbar. Let me introduce yes. Sajjad to you. Yes. This is the daughter, the, the son of the daughter of Rasulullah. Hadha ibn Fatima. In kunta jahilahu. If you claim that you don't know him. This is the daughter, uh, the, the son of Fatima, if you claim not to know him. And this is Hadha taqiyu, al naqiyu, al tahiru, al alamu. This is taqi. A pious one. Naqi, 
purified one. Wonderful. And هذا التقي النقي الطاهر. He is the purest one. العلم. And he is the scholar, knowledgeable person. Subhanallah. Excellent. I liked in this in this way where where you can see Farazdak. He didn't prepare the poems. Just randomly the words came because why he was talking. Sincerely, to honor Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, until when he said, "Ma qala la qatun illa fi tashahudhi, wa laula tashahud kanat la uhu naam." He has never said "la" except in his tashahud. When we say "ashhadun la ilaha illa Allah," even if if it were not for tashahud, his "la" would become "naam," and even Abdul Malik would say, "Wow." Farazdak, you have never said such a beautiful poem about us. He said, "Well, this came from the heart. <laughs> <laughs> not, not. I was, I was not just paying lip service here. This is a true person I'm talking about. This is Sajjad Zainul Abidin alayhi salam." Now, when we talk about this, now you come to know that the spiritual touch of Imam Sajjad was of different level, not to be mentioned at all. What do you yeah. think about? I mean, if you look at the poem, he's saying he is someone that Kaaba knows. Yes. So usually, Marifat is of somebody higher. <laughs> Allah. <laughs> you know, say Marifat of Allah. We say we have Indeed. to have Marifat of God. Indeed. Now, the, this is Marifat. The, the Kaaba knows. No. They have the Indeed. Marifat of this great Indeed. personality. Indeed. Indeed. You know. So this this is a great and and it shows that Imam alayhi salam the way the hadith says. For example, if you pray Salatul Layl, people would see it. They would see the 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 nur on your face. But this this is Imam Sajjad. He himself yes. is Sajjad. He's Zainul Abidin. Yeah, definitely. So that's why Kaaba would know him. Of course. And then of he course. said, uh, in in one line, I remember that uh, people go to kiss Al Kaaba. They go to kiss Hajarul Aswad. Yes. At this point of Hajarul Aswad, everyone is busy, wants to touch to kiss Al uh, Hajarul Aswad. But for Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, it is as if the Hajarul Aswad wants to stretch its hand to shake with the hand of Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. Allahu Akbar. This, Allahu this Akbar. is telling us that the spiritualism was of a different kind yes. from the Imam alayhi yes. salam. I mean, to have a person like that in the entire Islamic Ummah mm. in that nation at that time, yeah. imagine that. Subhanallah. That you know, and those poetry remained indeed. You know, with indeed. us today, and which yeah. we haven't done uh, uh, justice because we were supposed to go the whole poem, <laughs> yes, the whole poem <laughs> line by line. But because yeah. of time, yeah. we 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 did not manage to yeah. do that. Yeah. Now, when we look at the life of Imam alayhi salam, especially social life after Karbala, mm -hmm. we see Imam alayhi salam is uh, is like uh, under house arrest. He can't go out much, or if, he, or if he goes out, then he is under surveillance. Who is he meeting with, and so on and so forth. So now we come to learn that even though he was under kind of under house arrest, he managed to preach the madhab of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam in terms of uh, dua, in terms of a hadith. Uh, which kind of lessons are we learning here yes. from Imam Ali? Salam? If you look at Imam's life, I mean, he was the reference point mm. for many people who were being persecuted harshly by the Khulafa. Mm. Regardless of them being follower of Ahl Bayt as such, you know, like a proper Shia, so mm. to speak, or not. Because right after the uh, Shahadat of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Yazid went on a rampage to the extent that the Kaaba was burnt was torched, you know, in light, you know, to the extent where the Medina, the Masjid of the Prophet, where horses were taken inside, la you la know, to persecute, to take revenge, to really uh, get the allegiance from those people who were against, right? So it's a time period where there's a lot of, you know, qiyams going on, people going against, you know, mm. these actions revolts. of the Bani Umayyah, revolts going on. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the Khalifa trying to crush them, a lot of zulm taking place. And he became the refuge for all Mustadafi. Mm, 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 mm. You know, he was the provider of a lot of things. I mean, for a person to buy slave and free, 
mm-hmm. every time of the Eid, Rahmat Allah, and Fitr. Oh. I mean, it's very famous. He will sit in the middle, all the slaves around him, you know, he will free them on the night. Right? This shows oh. that there was a lot of support mm. which was from, from him towards the Ummah, towards the people, towards mm. the poor people. Um, to the extent that the governor of Medina, you know, took refuge in the house of Imam Sajjad mm. Imam said, you know, he came, you know, to save his life. Mm. He says, this is the only house that is safe. Indeed. Indeed. Right? So, he says, and he was involved in killing his own father, his own brother for the massacre of Karbala. But he provided that refuge. Subhanallah. He provided that support. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. This is the Imam of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. And uh, <clears throat> that's why we can, we can learn from Imam Zainul Abidin a lot of things, like this tasamuh to forgive the one who I has know. wronged. Yeah, and now we are not forgiving our own brother. Ya yeah, Allah. For little things. Mm. I mean, look how Imam Sajjad behaved. Mm. We have issues in Husseiniyah's, this become president, that become president, he is doing this way, he is doing mm. that. I'm sorry to say, mm. 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 you know, no, we no, are no. not forgiving each other. Unfortunately. Right? If somebody takes your parking spot in the, in the masjid, oh, I always park here, why did he took that spot? Yeah, I know I'm this not. guy is all becoming very judgmental. Mm. He's doing this on purpose. What happened to us? This shows that Imma alayhi salam are not closer to us, some of us, and that's why we forget them when we are dealing with our own brothers. While Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, as you have mentioned, he gave refuge to Muslim bin Uqba, who was known as a butcher of Medina, who killed and terrorized many people. When he came to us for refuge, Imam alayhi salam allowed him to stay in his house, as you said, and his family. And this is a lesson which we need to learn here. But if we look at, uh, even uh, deeper, we see Imam alayhi salam during his time, he produced two works which are very important. And these are Sahifa Sajjadiyya and Risalatul Hukuk. Maybe we need to go back again to read these two books. Oh, yes. Sahifa Sajjadiyya, full of dua. Duas of Imam alayhi salam for each and every occasion we can find from this book and mashallah the book has been translated into English as well so it's easy for us to, to, to read. Risalatul Hukuk 51 rights different rights Imam alayhi salam talks about them. Uh, I know that in English has been translated as uh, uh, treaties. Tre- treaties of rights Yes, which we, we need even to teach our children and to make sure we have this book with us because they are rights not only of other people, but even rights of you yourself. And Imam alayhi salam had made them to be as a, a reference point of whatever we talk with other people we need to refer to them. And of course, his uh, sayings and his ahadith are very important for us. We can find from both the books and we need to refer to them as well. And uh, maybe one of the, the the sayings of Imam alayhi salam, which I, I enjoy them much when I look at them, is the hadith which, where he said, I'mal li dunyaka ka'annaka ta'ishu abada wa'mal li akhiratika ka'annaka tamutu ghada Work for your dunya as if you are going to live forever. At the same time, work for your akhirah as if you are going to die tomorrow. Look at the balance which Imam alayhi salam reminds us about this dunya. This is his world view that you need to bring the balance of the two worlds, this dunya as well as the, the hereafter. And this is a manifestation of the ayah, Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. So we need two hasana of this world as well as the yes. hereafter. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, indeed. Yeah, uh, very nicely mentioned these two works, mm. which we can reflect a bit more if time allows us, uh, and also the sayings. Mm. Uh, one of the f- sayings that I really uh, love and I really share with wherever I go, with my friends, with my uh, people who participate in Manjaris and Jashan, in Vilada and all that, is this saying that mm. Imam Sajjad have said, three things are hidden in three things. Mm-hmm. Number one, the acceptance of dua mm. is in dua itself. Mashallah. 
So don't look at big dua or small dua. Mm. You know, sometimes we are looking for, you know, Maulana Saab, you know, give me big dua. Mm -hmm. You know, so that is very some Maybe sort of... Maybe Job Shant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. The acceptance of dua is in dua. Mm. He is that khuluz, that sincerity. Do not... So oh, this is just a taqibat. You know, we'll not read this. Mm -hmm. Or we'll not pay attention to this, for example. Just a dua. Yeah. Right? Small dua. You know? No. The acceptance is in the dua. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. The wrath of God is in the sin itself. Mm. Do not look at big sin or small sin. Mashallah. Oh no, uh, it's not a gunai kabire. Mm -hmm. It's not kabire. It's a sagire, it's a small, or it's just making fun. You know, sometimes it's just a gossip. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a little thing. Yeah. But, uh, that's like kabire, as a matter of fact, backbiting is, sure. is one of the greater <laughs> sin, right? Mm. You know, sometimes we think that just a little thing is is, is, is okay, God will, no. The Imam is saying, the wrath is hidden, is within that. The sin. So, yeah, one have to really be wary of. Indeed. Be very careful of what one is com committing. Indeed. Finally, he says, the awliya of God mm. are hidden among the men. Allahu Akbar. So you respect each and every individual. You know, we don't know how this person is connecting to mm. God. You know, we have to respect all of them. Subhanallah. You know, this is very similar to his grandfather in that powerful letter to Malik Ashtar. Mm. Imam they Ali are Ali either Islam. brother in your faith or, or they are equal in, in your humanity. humanity. Don't say, oh, I'm a Muslim. Oh, he's not a Muslim, so I'm greater. No. Either, either he's brother in your faith, yeah. equal once again, you know, but... If not in that, then he's equal in your insaniya, Allahu in your Allahu. humanity. Do not think that you are of some sort mm. of something. So the same, the awliya are hidden Masha among Allah. the people. And be very careful how you treat them, Asant. how you respect them. Yeah. Barakallahu fiqh. Allah, if we were to look at the lives of Aima alayhi muslam this way, then we would see our life becoming fresh on daily basis. Because with them, there is a lot to be learnt. And I, I believe that's why the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inni tarikun fikum athakalain kitab Allah wa itrati ahla bayt. Ma in tamasaktum bihima lan tadillu ba'di abada. I leave behind two, two weighty, two uh, important things. And these are thakalain, heavy, important, precious one is the book of Allah and another one is my holy progeny. If you hold on these two together, you will never go astray. So now we need to bring this balance again. Imagine the verses of the Holy Quran, if we all know them about doing good, forgiving people, and then we combine them with the life of Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, then here we would learn a lot of lessons. Final remark from you, Sheikh. Yes, I think as you said and as you advise. Uh, this should be taken, you know, by all of us, uh, Saif e Sajjadiyah, uh, and also the, you know, the Risale Hukuk, the treaties of rights. Mm. If we base our, our life, our curriculum of life, our curriculum of Sunday school, mm. of our schools, on these treaties of rights, on these duas that are there, reflecting upon these duas, you know, a reminder to myself. Um, and also to all our viewers as well. Like Bizarre for example, Allah. you have the dua of parents by Imam Sajjad, so that we remember our parents and a nukta and a point to take lesson from, from the, the all dua of Imam Sajjad. Let's take one, this dua in which Imam Sajjad asks Allah, Oh Allah, make me remember my parents every hour. Allahu Akbar. You know. What mm. a point, mm. right? If they are not alive, we remember them, for example, mm. send them Fatiha, for example. Mashallah. You know, uh, if they are alive, you know, if it is possible to really attend to them, take care of them uh, to the maximum capacity, capacity to remember them, somehow please them, mm. right? It's dua of Imam Sajjad. It's tarbiyah. Asad. It's teaching and training. It's not dua of Imam recited that period. You know, he's Sayyidu Sajideen, mm. Zainul Abideen, Abadan. Ahsan. Forever and ever, for eternity. His duas are forever. You know, he is, his treaty of right is forever. Indeed. For all insaniya, for Indeed. all humanity. Indeed. Yes. Jazakallah khair al-jazah. 
And I think uh, especially from the, the same dua when he talks about his parents, he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him be closer to his parents in a way that he can serve them. The line also I remember is, make me in front of them to be inferior like a slave who is in front of his master. Allah. And uh, see today, unfortunately, with our children and the children of our communities, the way they behave in front of their mothers and fathers, it tells us that the lesson from Imam Sajjad, Zainul Abidin alayhi salam, needs to be brought back again to our communities for us to learn. Shaykhna, thank you very much. Uh, it much. has been pleasure for me to be with you. It's May Allah pleasure. subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask him sincerely, bi barakat Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, to increase inshallah wa tawfiqat so that we can know Imam alayhi salam and a'imma alayhi muslim and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to act according to Kitab Allah. And uh, the lessons from Imam Sajjad alayhi salam are many, but unfortunately our time is very short. We inshallah happy to be with our dear brothers and sisters, viewers all over the world. And to you all we say Mubarak to you. Eid Mubarak, Kushali Mubarak, may Allah bless you all. Bi barakati salat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.